Stair, Ginger Rogers. John Lennon, Paul McCartney. Bert and Ernie. Han Solo and Chewbacca. Great partnerships. Great partnerships. Chocolate and peanut butter. Cheeseburgers and fries. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Or as I learned yesterday at Grindstone Coffee and Donuts in Sag Harbor, donuts plus marshmallow and Nutella and a cup of coffee. <laughs> Great partnership. <coughs> the Rolling Stones, the Moody Blues, U2, bands that are still going. Obviously, great partnerships. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak with Apple. Bill Gates and Paul Allen, Microsoft. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Google. Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield. It always comes back to food, right? Ben and Jerry's. These are great partnerships. Things that, partnerships that have affected the world. Partnerships that have, have it affected our lives. Partnership is important. Partnership is important. Even though I'm the kind of guy who would groan in school when I would hear the words, pair up. I still would groan if I hear the words, pair up. Even though I'm the, the, the kind of guy who thinks that most group work done in schools, and sorry to any teachers here, that most group work done in schools is just a complete waste of time, even though my idea of team sports in, in uh, high school was to go surfing with one or two other people, maybe, down at Dune Beach or Little Plains or Old Town. Even though I could be kind of a loner and an independent worker, I have learned, I have to admit that I have learned that partnership is important. Teamwork is important. Collaboration is important. The 3M company, they make uh, post-it notes. My wife has a, a post-it note addiction. She loves post-it notes. Anyways, the 3M company has said this about collaboration. They said there's a reason people rarely work entirely alone. At Post-it Brand, we believe that when we collaborate with other people, we can share ideas, get inspired, and get rid of what doesn't work. And it seems so much easier than when we're doing it on our own. Not only that, but sometimes mutual passion can help create truly revolutionary work. We never know when the partnerships we form will spark ideas that go on to change the world. I like that. I like that. Partnership is important. Ultimately, we cannot do it on our own, especially in the church. We cannot do it on our own, and we're not supposed to. God has made us, he's created us for community. He has created us for fellowship, for partnership, to need one another. He's created us for connection. And therefore, it's not a surprise that partnership is something we find throughout the Bible. Adam and Eve. God said about Adam, it is not good for you to be alone. Is not good. Moses needed Aaron to help him confront Pharaoh. Aaron and Hur to hold up his arms in the, in the battle. He needed Joshua to come alongside him. David needed Jonathan and his mighty men as he was fleeing Saul. Elijah had Elisha as his helper. Jesus called the twelve, and out of the twelve, the three. Paul had Barnabas, and then Silas, and Timothy. And we even see Paul partnering with the church, with the Philippian church. We just read how, how thankful Paul was for his partnership with the Philippian church. He says that he thanks God because of their partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. There's a story behind that statement. I'm not going to have you, you look there, but if you were, you could go back to Acts chapter 16. That's where Paul first went to Philippi. He had that call. God called him to go over to Macedonia, and he ends up in Philippi. It's a Roman colony, and there he, he was looking for people who were believers in, in the Lord and in, in God. He went along the river, and he found a woman named Lydia and other women who were there. He, he preached the gospel to them, and they believed. Paul and Barnabas uh, uh, set free a slave girl who had an evil spirit. They set her free from this, this spiritual bondage and from this economic exploitation she was under. They set her free. 
They saved a guy from killing himself, the Philippian jailer, if you remember that story. He thought they escaped, and they said, no, we haven't escaped, don't kill yourself. And he led that jailer and his whole family to faith in Christ. And so a church was born there out of these people that Paul came into contact with. They met in Lydia's house. Now that had happened about 12 or 13 years before the passage we just read this morning. That letter that he wrote to the Philippians. That, that passage and that, uh, the story and the forming of that church happened about 12 or 13 years before. And so all that time, the Philippians had been partnering with Paul for the sake of the gospel. And that's why Paul is so thankful. That's why he writes in, in verse 3 and 4, I thank my God every time I think of you, every time I remember you, in all my prayers, I always pray you with joy. And he prays with joy because of their partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. The Philippians had joined Paul in his work. They had, they had worked with him faithfully. And he would write at the end of this letter, he would say, it's good for you to share in my troubles. For you Philippians know that in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out to Macedonia, not one church, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. He looks back and says, you were the ones who partnered with me all this time. And so he celebrates their care and their concern for him. They're active partnering in the work of, the, of sharing the gospel. And I, I kind of get how, how Paul feels here. Because to a certain extent, I feel this way, that way, uh, with, with, with you and with this church. I've shared at the beginning how I've felt supported by this church for, for so long. I've been shaped by this church. How I think, how I know the Lord has been shaped by my years in this church. Um, I taught, uh, I, I was taught here. Uh, I learned how to serve here. Uh, I began the ordination process here. My, my daughter was baptized here. Many of you took covenant promises to pray for my daughter, my oldest daughter, Abby. Our oldest daughter, Abby. And so I've been shaped by this church. And so I praise God for your partnership all these years. And secondly, Paul's filled with joy, not only because they partner with him, um, not only because what he has seen from, from, the, from the earliest days until now, he's not only thankful for the, their, prat, their past and the present, he's thankful for their future. He says, I am confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on with, to completion until the day of Christ. That's another reason why he's thankful. Not simply for their past and their present, but for their future. He is confident that God has a future for them. That evidenced by their partnership in the gospel, God is going to carry it out and bring it to completion. This is a day in the life of many churches where we're struggling. Um, I've talked with people here, like, well, we only have this many people in our church, and we're really struggling. And I say, it's the same things happening in my church. And there's the same thing happening in a number of churches uh, in this area and all over the place. And it's easy to get discouraged. But I believe this as well. I believe what Paul said. That God who began a good work in us. He will see it through to completion. Institutions may come and go. But the work of the gospel goes forward. And the gates of hell do not prevail against it. And so be of good courage. Because there is a future for God's people. He has begun a good work in us. And he will see it through to completion. And so it's important to note. That, that Paul thanks God for this, this partnership in the gospel. And notice that it's in the gospel. It's not just a random partnership. Where there is hope in the gospel, that's where you have a real lasting partnership. Because we have to believe that the good news of Jesus Christ is actually good news. If we're going to partner together, if we're going to do the work of the church, we have to believe that the gospel is true. That it's real and that it actually changes people's lives. It's not just good to be good citizens. It's not just, well, I've got kind of a hope that maybe the big man upstairs will go solid for me when I die. It changes your life. It brings you hope and joy. And that's where partnerships are formed. Why should people go out on mission if they're not believing in the power of the gospel? Why should churches send people out? On mission, if we, we're not committed to the power of Jesus Christ. But if such partnerships are formed with that confidence 
in the good news of Jesus, then watch out. Powerful things can happen. Paul was, was confident that this, uh, this partnership was, was so important, so he gave God thanks. And such partnerships are important because they result in really amazing things. That's what he says in verses 7 through 9. Such partnerships result in love. In love. Paul says, it's right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share with God's grace in me. I can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Jesus Christ. Paul's, Paul's sharing from his heart here. He says, my prayer is that your love may abound more and more in depth of insight. These partnerships in the gospel result in love. That we love one another. We love others. We share the love of Christ. And we share in the grace of Christ. That's what he says also. He says, I believe that you share in God's grace with me. In this together, they're both dependent upon God's grace. They both receive God's grace. In a partnership, both are blessed. So that's a result. Another result is growth. That we, we grow in love. We grow in, in sharing God's grace. But we also we, we grow in the, in the knowledge and the and insight. That's what he says in verse 9. That your love's going to abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. As we partner together, as we find that we're better together, we grow in knowledge. Iron sharpens iron. We need each other. We need each other to sharpen each other. We grow in depth of insight. We grow in discernment, we're told. Verse 10 says, we grow in holiness that we may be pure and blameless. We grow in, in righteousness. It says that you're filled with the fruit of righteousness, Paul writes. And all of this is, is that we're becoming more like Christ. He says, that comes through Jesus Christ uh, to the glory and praise of God. And so when we partner together in the sake of the gospel, we grow in love, we share in grace, and we grow in, in knowledge and insight and holiness and righteousness. We become like Christ. And that leads to praise and glory of God. That's how the passage ends. To the praise, to the glory and praise of God. When you partner together in this church, when you partner with one another, not just individuals sitting in different pews, but when you see the ways that God has gifted you individually, and when you can recognize the way that God has gifted other people, the, sitting, the people sitting next to you, when you partner together with one another as a body, when you partner with other churches in this area, not that we are the last bastion of truth and goodness in the entire North Fork, but when you partner with other churches and you say, we're better, in the, we're better together, what resources do you have that we can share in ministry together? When you partner in ministries, such as you know, World Vision or, or local ministries, homeless ministries, I, I've heard uh, people talking about. When you partner in mission, I know this church has done a lot of work in Cuba over, over the years and other, uh, other places as well. If you were to partner with us, God is glorified and people praise Him. Because when God's people come together, Good things can happen when we come together in humility and love and for the sake of the gospel, not for our own sake. God is glorified and people please Him. God's pleased because He made us for this. He made us to work together. And when we come together for the sake of the gospel, using the gifts that God has given to us, people see that. They see the love of Christ in us. They see a reflection of Jesus in us. And they praise God because they see truth. Love is compelling. That's the most compelling thing that we can do as a church, showing the love of Jesus, because that is compelling. We can't impress people into the kingdom of God. You guys are nice people, but we can't impress. We can't compete with the world. I got nice people in my church. We can't compete with the world. We can't compete with the entertainment of the world. What is compelling about the church of Jesus Christ it's when we love each other, when we show the love of Jesus, when we look like Jesus. Then people praise God, they glorify God, they turn their lives to God. And that happens not when we're out doing our own thing, but when we partner together and we shape one another. And so I want to conclude with an encouragement and, a, and a, an invitation. Here's the encouragement. 
Partner together. Partner together here in this church. Find your gifts. If you don't know what they are, find out what they are. If you don't know your strengths, if you don't trust them, learn to. God has gifted each one of you. None of you is, is a wart on the body of Christ. You are all essential to the body of Christ. God has gifted you. Find out what those gifts are and fan them into flame. Help your brothers and sisters find out what their gifts are and fan those gifts into flame so the word goes forward. Partner with one another. Partner with brothers and sisters in your local area. We are better together. It's not always easy, but with God's grace, we can push through the conflict into the good. We don't have the luxury anymore of going it alone. We need each other. And so partner together. That's my encouragement. My invitation is to partner with us. A partnership is an important piece of what we're going to be doing in Europe. Um, already in Scotland, we're establishing uh, partners, local partners, uh, church planters, churches that are there, uh, ministry groups. It's part of what we want to do in Europe and Scotland. Uh, globally, we're connected with other East Mountain communities and in the U.S., wanting people to come and to be with us. A partnership is essential for for getting us there and for sustaining the work. And so we're seeking partnership financially, obviously. It makes it, makes it possible to live there. It makes the work sustainable. But we're looking also for partnership spiritually because there is, there is a protection that is given when God's people are praying for one another. There is an authority that is lent. There is a covering for the work that happens that we desperately need. And physically, we're looking for, for physical partners. We'd love for, for you to join us. We, we're already talking to churches about coming and, and doing a spiritual retreat with us, doing mission work uh, with us, being on the ground with us. But partnership is, is more than money. Um, if we could find some multi-millionaire to completely fund us, I'm not going to lie, that would be kind of awesome. But, <laughs> but, we have money, but no partners. We have cash, but we would not have people invested in the work, praying for us, loving us, caring for us, joining with us in the work. Because ministry is not cash. Ministry is people. And so uh, our partnership is not just money. Originally, I wanted to be a tent maker. Basically, I was willing to do whatever. I'll be a janitor. I've done it before, I'll do it again, whatever, so I don't have to ask anybody for anything. It's almost impossible to get a work piece in the UK, so that guy got shot down. And God had something more for me. He wanted to teach us 